Awfully small, isn't it? It's cute, though. All right, so first things first, we're going to work on the handle. That is a piece of 28 inch long hickory. I went with one and an eighth inch thick. Um, this is the type of hickory normally used for, you know, like a bow staff or something like that. So should be strong and not brittle, uh, ideal for an axe. Uh, most axe handles and uh, hammer handles tend to be hickory anyway. Um, it needs to fit inside this pipe, which is advertised as one and an eighth inner diameter. Um, it's, this piece of it is going to go under the axe head. Um, as you can see, doesn't quite make it. So I'm going to sand a little bit off the handle um, using my uh, homemade drill lathe. I suppose and uh, once I can get it fit in there then we'll work on the other end where the hand wrap is going to go. Alright, so it only took a few thousands off this. I don't know if you can see. Uh, you see the difference in the thickness? Maybe, maybe not. But, and now I need to do this end. And then I need to make it an inch so I can fit this pipe over it. I'm going to make a ring out of this that goes at the top of the handle. I need to slide over the handle part. I'm going to use a little more aggressive uh, sander this time. Alright, there we go. I got the whole thing done now. So this end should be able to fit into here. Which it does. Just with the slightest bit of slack. And then let's try this end. Just wiggle a little bit. Perfect. Time to make the ring, the decorative ring is going to go up here and then there's going to be a circle that goes down the bottom. Um, then I can worry about the leather itself, but um, got to make those first. What do you think? That'll make a nice collar. All right, so there we go. And that little ring is gonna go on like that. Now I need to make a little circle at the end here, so then I can wrap it with leather and between the two, and that should do it. All right, so I need a circular piece of steel for the bottom of the handle. I'm going to cut it out of this scrap 3 8 inch plate. Uh, hole saws are great for this kind of thing. You can make perfect 
circles without too much work. Uh, it does take a while, but um, trying to do it by hand with a plasma cutter or anything like that has been uh, not great. So, let's get to it. Handy side note here, I've actually flipped a piece of steel over. I'm going to keep drilling from the other side. These little hole saws, the teeth aren't very deep, and there's no fluting like a normal drill. You know, the spirals that go up. So the chips can't really extract very well, uh, and these can't really drill very deeply as a result. So this is 3 8 inch steel, you know. Uh, once I'm right around halfway through, I just flip it over and I start from the other side. It'll keep help keep this from uh, dulling. I'm gonna countersink that, uh, that circle down there just so the bolt fit through it flush. So, I just checked this up in a drill it's just a bolt and a nut and uh, just kind of holding it on there kind of acts as a poverty lathe just need to get a bevel on this piece and uh, smooth it out a bit, that's all I really need That's not too bad, huh? Alright, so I've got the pipe cut that's going to go on this end of the axe. The axe head is going to be here. I need to etch the name of the axe into this part. So I made this template out of vinyl. I'm just going to stick this on here. I'll stick the whole thing in a solution of salt water and I will etch away for a while. Alright, so I've got my vinyl template attached to the tube. Kind of looks like a stick of dynamite, doesn't it? Uh, you wouldn't believe how hard it is to apply that straight on a curved piece. This may or may not be the third attempt, but I think it looks pretty close. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to stick it in my salt water, face up, and then I will put some sacrificial steel on top of it, and I'll let it cook for a little while. Alright, so the etching has been going for an hour at 1 amp, I just turned it off. Uh, let's see what we have here. Sacrificial steel... Feels pretty good. That feels excellent. I'm guessing you can't see it, but let me uh, let me take the vinyl off, and maybe it'll be more obvious. Obvious. So there we go. Came out pretty good. I uh, let's see if you can see that. You can see it's pretty shallow, probably a sixty-fourth of an inch, but it's in there good. I may uh, fill in the letters, blacken them a bit so that they stand out more, but especially from, you know, once everything's kind of aged, it might just blend in a little bit too much, so I'll darken the letters. That might be the last thing I do, but for now, it's uh, turned out pretty well.
Alright, so I have printed and cut out a paper template for the axe head. I'm going to cut this from half inch AR450. I'm going to use a plasma cutter um, and then I will finalize it with a die grinder, an angle grinder most likely. A little side note, I used a thick marker to um, trace my pattern. Um, reason being is I'm going to plasma cut on the outside of the marked line. That will give me about an eighth of an inch, maybe even a little bit more um, extra material. This is especially important on the cutting edge because um, if you watched one of my earlier videos, I did a little demonstration on um, you know, how the hardness of the AR450 is um, impacted by plasma cutting. The, the heat affected zone can ruin the hardness of the steel. So I'll cut far away and then I will gradually grind it back to this actual shape uh, slowly and, you know, I'll cool it down in between passes and everything so that I don't overheat the actual edge. Uh, the rest of it's fine because it's just structural, except for the tip, I suppose, down here. But um, I'll be paying very close attention to this part. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to ruin the steel. I mean, realistically, I might as well just use you know cheap mild steel if I'm gonna ruin the temper of uh, of this stuff. So. I actually had to flip the plate over here and hammer off all the dross to see the spots that I missed, such as right there, right there, just a few little bits um, preventing me from separating it. The cuts are really ugly, and actually look at all the heat over here. I had to go over these parts a couple times. Uh, the front edge of the blade went perfect, and then, I don't know. I don't know if the tip got clogged up or what. Maybe I'll take it apart um, and see what happened, but that's weird. It just wasn't cutting very efficiently. I had to go a lot slower so you could see all the heat that went into it. Oh well, I'm going to be grinding all this back anyway, but it's just more work. So I took the gun apart. This is the, uh, the tip here, and this is what was inside of it. Uh, see if I can focus that. There we go. You see, it kind of melted away the, the the hole a little bit. See the comparison to the new one there. If it'll focus, there we go. Not really sure what happened. This is actually a brand new machine. It's the first time I've used it. I think I might have had the uh, the air pressure wrong. The regular is a little funny on it. It shows one thing when you're cutting and one thing when it's not cutting. So, not sure which is the correct value, but uh. Interesting. I think the one on the left was just spreading out the plasma arc a little bit too much. Oh well. Live and learn. Alright, so I cleaned up the plate with some sandpaper just so I could remark it. And then, um, you know, so I can actually see where I marked it. So I kept a pretty good gap at the, on the end here. I did check before I ground up uh, the surface. Make sure I didn't have any of the heat discoloration um, this far back. And I did not... Um, I did back here, but I don't really care about any of this stuff. This is, um, there's no, there's no edge on the back side here. But, uh, I got enough room, I got a lot of material, especially back here, to remove. Uh, I'm probably going to rough it with angle grinders, and then probably grinding disc, then sanding disc, and then I will use my router table over here with a carbide bit. Let me get a perfect 90 degree edge, and that should be it for now.
All right, so I've got the axe head um, rough ground with the angle grinder. I had to remark it a few times, but um, it's pretty good. You can see the curvature is not exact, but I just needed to do mass material removal to get close to the desired shape. I'm going to sand this surface so it's a nice smooth arc, especially in here and here up here a little bit, just to kind of clean it up, and then I will use my router table to make sure that these edges are you know perfectly uh, 90 degrees they're actually pretty close with the grinder but uh, just need to make it perfect or as close to it as possible All right, so I cut out these two blocks to use on the side of the axe head. I'm just clamping them together, and then I'm going to sand them even with each other. They're actually really close, but I'll just get rid of that saw blade finish uh, regardless. All right, got these bad boys perfectly smooth and flat and perpendicular. You can't even tell that they're the two pieces but you can see the separation at the top there. All right, so I've got the ax head 90% done after all the uh, angle grinding, die grinding, and sanding. Um, I always keep these printouts around just for this reason to kind of just eyeball to the, you know, to the look right. I think I'm pretty good. Um, the next step is going to be to make this part more blocky. If you look over here, there's it's clearly a block shape. Um, I say it's about two inches um, thick. So instead of making this all out of two inch thick material and grinding it down, I'm just going to take these blocks I just cut out and they're going to go something like that. I'll weld them in place. I'll grind back all the welds so it looks like one seamless piece of steel. Um, yeah, it shouldn't be too bad. I did remove a little bit too much material on the bottom side here. Uh, you can see there's nothing down there. Uh, I'm going to have to fill on that area with weld and then grind it all back. I can... Actually, you know what? I'm going to do the bevel on the edge of the axe first. Um, just so I don't risk hitting the blocky area with the sanding. You know, it's kind of in the same plane. So I'll do the bevel first. Not fully sharpen it but just get that mass material removal done then I'll weld these. Alright so I've roughly marked how far back I want the bevel to go. This is about an inch and three quarters. Same on both sides. And I've also marked my center line. And uh, let's get to the grinding. Many hours later. Three days later. thousand years later. Alright, I'm not sure how much footage I'm going to show 
Um, there were many hours of cutting and grinding and sanding over maybe three or four days or so. Um, we're pretty much done with the shape and the bevels and everything. This whole section from here on over to here is tapered down. I don't know if you can see it very well, but it's there. And I got the, uh, the armor piercing spike um, sharpened as well. Um, it looks pretty good. There's one little imperfection right there. But it's so close to the edge that, you know, when I actually sharpen this, it's going to take that out. Um, this is not sharp yet. It's just, um, I just formed the basic shape, the taper, and that's it so far. So, um, I'll do the sharpening last so I don't cut myself in the process uh, of, you know, doing other things. But for now, I'm going to weld these bad boys on here to make this kind of a uh, more of a cube shape or a box shaped uh, center part of the head and I'll, uh, I'll grind that all back flush so it all looks like one big chunky piece alright so I've got all my pieces beveled on the uh, edges like so so that I can uh, weld into the uh, into the gap in there and then grind it all back smooth and seamlessly uh, I'm switching out my welding wire. This is what I normally use. It is uh, ER70S6. Common for any kind of steel, mild steel welding. Swapping it out for this stuff. This is a low alloy steel. This is ER80SD2. Um, it's good for welding dissimilar steels. Uh, alloyed steels to mild steel or, you know, high carbon steel to mild steel and that is exactly what I'm doing right here. Uh, you might not think these welds are going to be structural, but um, they are, and you'll see why in a little bit. You know, I was just tacking these side pieces on to get them in position for the final welds and uh, I was rushing a little bit and I didn't clamp them down and you can see why that's not a good idea. Look at the bottom piece, you can see there's a nice gap in there. And no, there's a t gap in the top piece as well. Tiny little gap. Now I have to cut out the welds clamp it back down and re-weld it. So, so much for saving time. I don't know if you're wondering what actually happened when you, when I welded over here, uh, you know, a single tack weld, it cooled and it pulled the piece away from the metal down, like, down here. So then I just welded this out of position. Same thing must have happened up here. I must have welded this side first. The top piece kind of went, whoop, just a little bit. Just a hair, and then I end up welding it back in place. So, always clamp your welds, uh, clamp your pieces together well before welding, or you will regret it. All right, so I got that all welded up. Um, I've said this before, but I like pretty looking welds as much as anybody else. But um, with this sort of situation, as I mentioned before, you know, I cut a deep bevel, I weld into it, and then I weld over it. And that's what you're seeing on the outside of all this kind of glopped on weld, especially on the edges, because the heat from the welding actually kind of cuts away the uh, nice sharp edges so I pile it back on that is way too hot even with clothes I pile the weld back on so that I can grind it all back get my nice straight edge again and then uh, there'll be no pitting or 
voids where there's missing uh, welded areas. So I'm going to go hit the bell sander and get this all ground to shape. I might Alright, we are down here in the dungeon with my drill press. Now, the idea is I've got the axe head turned upside down. I want to drill an inch and a quarter hole uh, partially through the center of the head here so that uh, it can fit this piece. This is the piece I etched earlier. It's going to go straight into that hole. Um, just for strength and that's going to get welded and ground and sand and so forth but first things first I gotta do the hole and I can't use a hole saw because or an annular cutter or anything like that because I only need to go partially through so I'm going to drill a bit it only cost uh, I think this cost like $93 this drill bit oh well uh, probably the only hole it'll ever drill but I can't think of an easier way to do this uh, a milling machine would be nice, but I don't have one, so this is what I'm doing. I've, uh, I've got it all rigged up here nice and solid, clamped down, I measured it uh, that it's nice and straight, so the hole is, um, you know, perfect, so that, you know, when the, the tube comes out, it's not tilted to the, the sides or something like that, but it should be pretty close. Um, never used a drill bit this big, hopefully this works. I'm not even sure if my... You know, my lovely horror freight uh, drill press can even handle it, but uh, I guess we're about to find out. All right, so we got the hole drilled out. Uh, didn't get quite as deep as I wanted to. I wanted about an inch deep. I got about three quarters of an inch before the drill bit gave up. Um, I didn't center drill it. I'm sure some people are wondering. I kind of figured that drill bit was a throwaway. And if you look very closely, you can see why there's like a you can see how there's that half inch strip of AR400 hardened steel in the center and then there's two three quarter inch mild steel bits on the side. Uh, I knew it would be drilling a long way through a lot of hardened steel and I figured it would pretty much trash any drill bit so I, uh, I was just hoping I could get the one hole and I got it good enough. The real question is is this going to fit? I have not tried this yet. Wow. That is really tight. It's just enough though. I can get it in there. Um, yeah. I think that worked out. I've got just enough tiny little bit of slop I can straighten it out. Uh, I'm going to bevel around the hole. 
a bevel around this edge and I'll weld the two pieces together, weld into this bevel once these two pieces are joined together and then I'll, I'll sand that all back and it'll kind of all look like one piece but I think that's pretty uh, pretty optimal. Uh, I didn't want to drill all the way through because this end and this end is all one continuous piece and I didn't want to lose that strength. I was willing to drill part way through it but I didn't want to go all the way through. Uh, it's about an inch and three quarters tall so we made it almost halfway through with the drill bit and uh, really when you consider that this is kind of like a, a dished you know a uh, hole it's probably exactly halfway through so uh, you know I'll get the look I wanted and I'll get the strength I wanted um, I call it a win it's just too bad that drill bit had to sacrifice his life for this project but that's how it goes All right, so this part of the axe, I think this is the shoulder, has a cutout in it, as you can see. So I made a simple paper template and taped it on there and uh, traced it out, which was really not a great idea because this is the fourth one I made. And um, they kept coming out a little bit off. And I should have used uh, adhesive vinyl because you can see it pulls away. Uh, it's hard to make it lay flat. I could have just glued it down, I suppose. But, whatever. Maybe I'll go back over this with some vinyl instead. But, you get the idea. I'm going to cut that out with an angle grinder now. So I got the etchings cleaned out. Um, if you're wondering what I was using, it's uh, this little guy. These are actually um, the nylon uh, wire wheel. It had a little bit of abrasive material on it. It's handy for things like that. The nylon, can you can really press it in there and it'll clean out all this area uh, without removing too much material. A lot of the times these etchings are very shallow, so you know, hitting it with a with a die grinder and a wild wire wheel will work, but it'll really um, diminish the effect and the depth of your etchings. So I think this came out pretty good. All right, so I got six coats of stain and polyurethane on the handle. So while that's drying, I need to drill the uh, axe head and shoulder to accept some rivets. I'm going to drill through this way, and I'm going to use this quarter-inch stock as um, quasi-rivets. 
Now, the illustration of this piece does not have any sort of visible rivets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of bevel the end of uh, the rivets and then I'm going to weld them in place and then grind them off uh, smooth so you don't see any of them. I'll probably have one up here in the head, one down here, and maybe, maybe one right there. I don't know if there's enough room uh, that I can weld this and grind it back without it being a huge mess. Especially with that R so close. But, um, we shall see. You know, it's actually a um, rather cold day today, but uh, I open up the garage doors anyway. Just, uh, I always love the sound of rain. It's so relaxing, especially when you're working like this. Anyway, so I don't know what happened there with the, uh, with the saw. I think, um piece is so thin it just kind of uh, vibrated a bit and got caught by the saw blade so that was uh, that was pretty crazy and uh, it bent the thing on you know at least a foot or 18 inches or so kind of scary not gonna lie but um, I cut the pieces with an angle grinder a couple of them right there and I'm going to just chuck them up in my drill and bevel the edges with some sandpaper. And um, then it'll be on to drilling the actual head of the axe. Alright, so we're back down here in the drill press dungeon. I've got the uh, the head of the axe all jigged up here. Um, I did level it with a uh, a level over there. Uh, it's not super important because you know I'm gonna drill the hole. I'm gonna put the rivet through and I'm gonna weld it flat. So it doesn't really matter if it comes out exactly in the same spot on the other side. I just didn't want it to be you know totally off. Basically, I decided to go with just two rivet rivets. One up there, and then one right there. Um, I was thinking about putting more, but the only thing these do is just prevent the, you know, the wooden handle from flying out of the head. And two pieces of quarter-inch steel is going to be more than enough. Um, I got one down here. This is mainly just to kind of hold these, you know, these are fairly flexible, just to hold those in place. Um, you know, obviously this one's going to be the main strength going through the thickest part of the head and everything, so I'm not worried about it. I just didn't want to run into an issue where I had to grind back the weld really close to these etched letters, especially right there, and I end up losing, you know, I end up grinding away the, uh, the R or something, so just not worth it in my opinion. I've done that before, not interested in doing it again. All right, so got the handle inserted into the head of the axe. Now I'm gonna just drill the, um, you know, drill through the wood, and then I'll tap in my little rivets. Hopefully they'll fit, and then I will weld and grind them back, and uh, hopefully they'll be invisible. All right, so we've got our little ring we made for the um, top of the hand wrap. It's gonna go right there. Uh, there's no really easy way to attach this. So as you can see, I kind of carved out, um, you know, a little lip here so that 
it'll just rest right against it like so I'll epoxy that in place and then the hand wrap will come right up to this and it will hold it as well so it really can't go anywhere the epoxy is just to keep it from rattling as you can see I did sand it off a little too much so I just want to keep it steady in there it should work okay Alright, so, welcome back to another episode of Boy, I Hope This Works. Um, so I need to send a drill a hole in the bottom of the shaft there. Um, ideally, doing this on a lathe would be great, but I don't have one. And uh, a drill press would be okay, but um, that's at least... 28 inches long and I just don't have that kind of travel in my drill press maybe half of that so really don't want to have to freehand this um, you know when freehanding you can you can control side to side pretty easily I can you know get that straight without too much difficulty but controlling for the other axis is another whole story so as you can see I've rigged this up about as good as it's going to get. I've got uh, 7 16th uh, spacers down here and then I believe this is 7 8th down here. And I'm um, using a digital angle finder. I've indicated that the drill bit and the shaft is within a tenth or two of a degree of each other. So then I can drill that in straight from here. Uh, I should be good to go. Alright, time to screw this end cap on and then uh, weld it in place and grind it back and sand it. Hopefully it'll look nice and seamless. came out all right except I literally slipped and you can see it kind of got a little bit on the edge there it's gonna be fun trying to grind that back and retain this nice smooth bevel but just more work for one little slip up there we go I don't see any evidence of the weld Get it all sanded down nicely. Still got that nice bevel. Looks like it never happened. Alright, next thing's next. Time to do the hand wrap. So I've got my borders defined with these two rings here. I've sanded this roughly so the glue will bite. And um, yeah, let's get to the wrapping. Oh, there we go. All done. Only took a half hour or so. A little dark spot right there. It's actually sweat that dripped out of my gloves. Um, but otherwise it looks pretty good. I had to, you know, manually cut that last little sliver to fit in there. But, uh, I think we did pretty well. Alright. Now we just have to... Um, give the head of the axe a nice blackened patina 
to make it look like it's old, I'm going to be using some Birchwood Casey uh, Ultra Blue gun bluing formula for this. Uh, I shouldn't need a lot. Heads, the head of the axe is pretty small, but um, I got a spray, spray bottle of it somewhere. I'll use that. So I just finished sharpening the blade. I use my work sharp as usual. It's pretty sharp. I don't uh, I don't sharpen my my blades quite as much as I used to. After I chopped the corner of this finger off with one of them, it's actually healing up pretty good. You can see just see the fingernail has uh, not quite grown back. It's getting there though. But um, you know this is more of what you would expect from. You know, any big vendor, basically, like a Cult of Athena or something like that. It's sharp, but not razor sharp. Uh, interestingly enough, sharpening it was kind of a pain just due to this angle. It was actually more work in some ways than doing my, you know, giant six-foot-long swords. Um, the other problem with this blade profile is with these kind of these wings on the sides here, or the top and bottom, rather, um, when I was grinding this bevel in, you can see how far this bevel goes, it's about a, it's almost two inches, but I didn't want to make it too thin down here, so this has kind of got like a flat, you know, angle, the center part, and then as it comes out to the edges, I get a more rounded, you know, convex shape to try to give some extra strength to the ends, you know, if you hit, if I thin this out a lot and you hit something hard with this, this could possibly snap off. Um, hopefully I've prevented that. I don't know if you can really see the, the profile. Uh, not really. But, you get the idea. The, uh, the gum blue came out great. I only left it on for a very brief amount of time. And you can see it kind of left a very light, splotchy finish, which is pretty much exactly what I wanted. I wanted it to look you know, old. Uh, I sanded and scotch brighted generally around all these edges just to kind of, uh, you know, pro provide some contrast and really give it that worn in look. Um, I think it looks pretty good. You know, something brand new that looks old. I think I matched, matched the picture pretty well. Let's see if I can see. Yeah, I mean, you can see pretty much the same exact idea. Not too bad, I'd say. So that's pretty much it. Um, just waxing it up a little bit. I like to use uh, Ren Wax. It's just it's good for the steel, prevent rusting, and it's good for the wood, and it's good for the leather too. So you don't have to worry about you know using different products in different parts of the uh, the axe here. Um, it does darken the leather a little bit, but real oil will seriously darken it, so it's not too bad of an alternative. Uh, it doesn't need to go on too heavy, I just like to kind of like light, lightly brush the whole thing. You really can't even feel it, you can't really see it, but uh, it will help. Um, so that's about it. I think it turned out pretty nice. I'm happy with it. Um, it's kind of a... Not quite a one-hander, not quite a two-hander. Kind of in the middle. Not really that heavy, I'll have to weigh it, but... I mean... It's not bad. Definitely would want to use a two-handed. That's definitely a little bit too heavy to be using a one-handed. It's not so much the weight, it's just, you know, 28-inch long 
handle and uh, all that weight at the end is away from you. It really increases the leverage. It kind of makes it um, annoying to hold. Especially if I kind of hold it down there, yeah. That's pretty heavy. But that's perfect, I think, like that. Not too shabby. Definitely the smallest thing I've ever made and definitely the most useful or useful you know for those daily axe battles that you get into but that's it leave me a like subscribe comment unsubscribe hate mail whatever it takes i'm here till next time